What's up, R&B fam? I'm Royce, and this video is for the fellas. I'm addressing all the new dads out there, and I'm gonna tell y'all all the things that no one ever does tell you, but I'm going to, because you need to know the things that no one tells you. Now, of course, for all you new moms and moms-to-be, this video is also for you because I think it's important for you guys to know as well what your partner um, is either going through right now currently or could potentially go through uh, once the baby gets here. So I highly recommend you guys watch this video together because we all know it's quarantine. Y'all sit next to each other anyway, and if they're in the kitchen, go grab them. If they're in the bedroom, sit them down next to you because we're going to get through this together. And before I get into everything, let me just say up front... Mothers, you are all beautiful. You're amazing. You're literally giving birth to another human being out of your body. All right, so I completely get that. There's, you, can't, you can't parallel it to anything else. It is just amazing. It's, it's absolutely, it's a miracle. That's all I gotta say. So just know that I know that. But us dads and new dads to be, we're gonna be going through some stuff too up in here even though we might not say it or even understand it. So that's some of the things I'm gonna to address today. So let's take it from the top. She's pregnant. Oh, great, now what? Planned, unplanned? We won't worry about that. What can you do as a new father-to-be to be there for your new mom-to-be? So for me, what I've learned after going through this is for us dads, it's going to be hard for you to feel like you're a part of the process because we're not the ones who are actually pregnant. So our partners, they're the ones literally growing life. So they're, you know, you see they're holding their belly and they're having the special bonding time. You're just kind of sitting at, sitting there just like, oh, cool. You know, that's, I, I want to hold my belly and it not look weird. So one of the things I highly recommend doing to kind of help with that bonding experience uh, through the pregnancy is the ultrasounds. So there's going to be a certain amount of ultrasounds that you go to to see the baby's development and all that stuff. And I think it's important for us to be there for as many as possible. I understand life happens. You might not be able to be there for every single one. Um, but definitely go to as many as possible because every time you go and you get to see the progression of your baby and you just get to see kind of like the well-being of your partner as well, making sure they're doing okay. If there are any serious developments, you guys can tackle that together. And so that's one way I think will really help with that bonding experience. So now you guys are bonding, you're going through the ultrasounds, everything's great, except one thing. You've now realized somehow you've become her slave. Yes, that's right. I said slave. She has all these cravings. There are things she can no longer do that you'll have to do. You'll have to pick up um, if you guys are living together, laundry, dishes, you know, all that like normal stuff. But then also like the little things, you know, like just, you know, gaining weight with her because she just wants to eat everything. And what she wants to eat is delicious. So you also, of course, have to eat everything. It's crazy not to. If you want to try and stay in shape during this moment, I commend you. But uh, I didn't. So another example, you know, say she drops something, you know, obviously as her belly gets bigger, it's going to be harder for her to bend over and do things. So it's important for you to be there in those little small moments, whether it's just picking up a sock off the floor. That's, it might seem silly at the time, but those are the little things that you can do in those moments to help be there and support her. You may not think it's important to pick up the sock, but you should pick up the sock. Trust me, pick up the sock. So now let's fast forward a little bit. You guys are getting closer to your due date and you're realizing, wow, I have no idea what to do or even what to expect. Well, one thing you can do to help prepare a little bit mentally is actually check in to see if your hospital provides birthing classes. Now, I know this might seem a little annoying and tedious, especially because those classes are very long and boring, but you'll learn a lot. Trust me, I felt the same way. I didn't want to take the classes, but by going, it's like the, it's the little things that you wouldn't even think about um, that you would even need to prepare for. Th th that's what these classes are for. And again, also just being there with your partner, showing that support, it'll mean the world when the time actually comes. So for example, they literally showed us in the class a full on birth, all right? So I know you see the movies, they always cut around the, the actual parts. You know what I mean? But this video, it sh they showed it all, all right? This is, it should not have been legal for what they showed. But by seeing that, it freaked me out. But on top of being freaked out, I now know, okay, I can expect to see that or something like that. So when the time came, I was actually ready to see that. 
And they also teach you really helpful things like how to change a diaper. I had no idea how to change a diaper, so that was actually good for me to learn. How to swaddle your baby, which I still didn't even learn after the classes. And what I feel like most importantly, they also gave you a kind of rudimentary CPR class. Now, there also are some books out there dedicated towards dad, so I would recommend just kind of searching, see what you can find. And I'm actually making this video because I tried going on YouTube to find stuff and there really wasn't anything. So hopefully this video can be a part of that process to help you guys prepare. So now fast forwarding a little bit more, the baby is on the way. For us, uh, Bianca's water actually didn't break, so she ended up getting induced. Uh, which I had no idea what that meant until I went to those birthing classes and I was actually able to be prepared for that moment um, now learning about it. It pretty much means we got to go into the hospital, we kind of just strolled in all lackadaisically um, and got to choose when we wanted the baby to get here more or less. Now I understand for you it could be a completely different story, it could be a lot more hectic, so it's really important to have your bags packed and ready to go. Um, mothers will have their own certain things packed and for the fathers, just to give an example, some things I had ready, some things that I think were essential during that moment, obviously clothes, um, snacks, definitely phone chargers, definitely bring phone chargers, extension cords if you have them, just because plugs are always in the weirdest places in hospitals, so you wanna be, make sure you can plug in where you need to plug in. And most importantly, bring cash, because you will not get fed. So you will need to get food either outside or in the cafeteria or, you know, the vending machine, Old Faithful. And then also you can bring um, some type of entertainment device. I brought my Nintendo Switch. I also had my iPad. Um, funny thing is though, I really didn't have too much downtime. The little bit that I did have was after her induction. She had fallen asleep for maybe like two or three hours. So I started playing some games for like maybe 15 minutes, but then friends and family were calling, they wanted to come see her, so I really just, I didn't have the time that I thought. So that's something to keep in mind if you think, you know, as a dad, you're just gonna be there chilling while things happen. You won't. So now you guys are at the hospital, you're settled in, um, things are either moving pretty slow or they might be moving pretty fast. Um, but something that's important for you to do while you're there is one, learn the lay of the land, try and figure out the hospital. If you didn't do a hospital tour, that's actually something um, that's very useful to do in the beginning before the labor process happens. If, that'll be a huge help because just in case you need to rush somewhere, you don't wanna spend time trying to figure out how to navigate the maze of the hospital. So really it's important to learn where to park, learn where guests can actually come in, uh, the entrance where guests can actually come in and visit, where the waiting room is, and the most important of all, the vending machines. So now the momentum's building, labor's almost here. Now it's important for you guys to really understand your partner and know if she's somebody who really wants you by her side every second of the way, holding hands, or she might want some space, you know, because if you're somebody who kind of talks a little bit more than they should, that might be a little bit too much for them because in these moments, just the littlest thing can kind of set them off and get them pissed off. So it's really important to, to understand what your partner wants. And if you have no idea, just ask her, how can I be there for you in this moment? Trust me, she'll really appreciate that as well. All right, now the baby's coming. This is where it gets exciting because men, you have some decisions, some decisions to make. One being, are you going to catch the baby? And no, I don't mean catch like you're throwing a football and you're catching the, this new birthing life. No, it means being there right as the baby's born. Um, in my, for my experience, I actually chose to catch the baby and the doctor is literally there by your side, you're not by yourself. <laughs> and the doctor kind of just guides the baby into your arms. And so you essentially become the first person to actually hold your new child. And it is the most amazing experience ever in life, I will, I am willing to say. Granted, you will see things, unspeakable things, and you will be scarred for the rest of your life, but it's worth it. It's, it's, yeah, yeah, it's worth it. Now, if you're somebody who's a little queasy, can't really stand the sight of blood, you may not want to do this because, I mean, you not to get too graphic, but fellas, I know you've seen it, but you haven't seen it, okay? When I say that, it's, it's, Pearly gates are open, right? And it might be a little too much for all that. Even though what's coming out is such such beautifulness, such beautifulness. But you know, it's it's a lot, it's a lot. So I would say definitely know yourself <laughs> before making that decision because it can either be a very beautiful experience or an experience that you'll regret for the rest of your life. 
And the second choice you're gonna have to make is if you wanna cut the umbilical cord, which again, I highly recommend that you do. Unless, again, if you're a little queasy, maybe not, just because in my experience, all right, I was given these dull scissors, all right, I, I'm, I'm gonna attest to that, because I thought it was gonna be a nice little quick snip and be done with it. But uh, it was actually more of kind of like a, you know, I kind of had to finesse it, which I wasn't ready for, and then finally it snapped. So it's not like the beautiful one and done like they show in the movies. It might be, just make sure you get some sharp scissors. Whoo, and speaking of snips, little side tangent, if you guys decide, if you're having a son and you decide to get him circumcised, you will have the option if you want to witness. And I chose that option to witness. So, you know, I wanted to be there for my boy, you know what I'm saying? That's my son. I ain't going to leave his side for a second. But I, I kind of wished I would have left that one a little bit. So I wasn't actually in the room when it was happening. I was in this other side room behind some glass, I guess, to stop a parent from, like, freaking out from literally watching a doctor cut your, uh, <laughs> your baby thing uh, into little, and slicing it up. I watched it all and I was just sitting there just, just like this. If you want to talk about a bonding moment for the father, I felt everything. Everything my baby was feeling, I felt it all. Another important thing I want to point out for the dads during labor, uh, the importance for you to actually be the one that's by your partner's side. Depending on the situation, uh, you guys might want to have some other family members in there or what have you. And of course, it's a very emotional moment, so a lot of people are going to want to, you know, be a part of it. So it's very important, though, that you establish that you're the one who's going to be by your partner's side through all of this. And if that can get a little, you know, weird or, you know, build up some tension, I recommend telling a nurse um, because the nurse is going to be a little bit more savage about that and be like, hey, hey, hey step back. This is let, let the dad, let the dad hold the hand, you know, something, something like that. But that's something um, definitely I would say just pay attention to and look out for. So now the baby's here. You've made decisions on what you wanted to do while in the room. The baby's now laying on mother's chest. You're right next to her soaking up this moment. How do you feel? Now, moms, this might be a little tough to hear, but this is where it kind of gets a little tricky for us fathers because this is where things really start to affect us up here. So for instance, for me, seeing my baby for the first time, catching him, obviously it was all such an amazing moment and the experience was great. But if I'm being completely honest, when I was looking at him in that private moment, cause uh, the nurses, they give you and your partner, you know, just kind of like a little moment just for it just to be the three of you. Um, unless you're having twins or whatever, then four or five or you, whatever. So there's that moment for you guys just to be together and experience that. Um, but I have to be honest that, you know, looking at my son, I knew he was my son and I knew I loved my son. But at the same time, I didn't feel that like complete, like amazing, undenying love that I always hear about. And I know, for instance, for other fathers, it might be even worse where they might feel that the baby they're looking at is a complete stranger and just have absolutely no attachment to them. So I say this to let you guys know, if you are feeling that, it's okay. Don't beat yourself up about it. So I feel like that's such a moment that's so hyped up and it should be. So when we don't feel the way we should feel or we think we should feel, then we start internalizing that and we're like, okay, well, what's wrong with me? Why don't I feel this way? Uh, what, what, what's going on? Am, am I not going to be a good dad? And like now you're like spiraling down and the baby's just been here for five minutes. So just know that whatever you're feeling in that moment, it's okay. There will be that time where those feelings will start to come. Now that you guys have had that private moment, your, uh, your partner has probably done skin to skin. I highly recommend as the dad, you also do skin to skin um, so you can have that moment. And it's really, again, a really nice bonding moment. And it will help with those initial feelings of like, ah, I don't, I don't, I don't know how I feel about this baby yet. Um, so just, it'll just be those extra steps that'll help you connect. This next part, I was actually not prepared for at all. They did not teach it in the classes or anything. And that was the fact that you really do not have time to really breathe once the baby's there in the hospital. You're in there for about a day, day and a half, which is crazy to think about. Like you, your partner literally just pushed out a human being and they're already trying to kick you out. But in those moments, either the baby's awake and you got to take care of the baby. Um, and you've never, <laughs> if this is your first time, you've never taken care of a baby before. So that's a lot to handle. And then when you're not doing that, there's nurses constantly coming in, checking in, doctors coming in. 
documents that have to be filled out and it's just so much back to back. Family members and friends, they wanna see you guys. So it's just a lot of stuff being thrown at you at once and it's just really important to kind of wrap your head around it and be prepared for that um, because it was very overwhelming uh, for me not knowing that part and I felt very prepared going into the birthing part but uh, there actually wasn't a lot to teach me about afterwards at least like those that first day afterwards and knowing that there's going to be so much kind of interrupting your flow so it's very important the smallest downtime that you guys do have take that time to rest whether it's just 15 minutes 20 30 minutes it'll make a huge difference rather than trying to power it out and fathers just so you know you won't have a bed you have to sleep on a jacked up couch pull out couch whatever they have it's not going to be comfortable and on top of that they'll have meals for the mom they will not have meals for you so again that's where you'll need to know the lay of the land the cafeteria will be your best friend or if you can have somebody bring you food a friend or a family do that that'll be amazing but it's very important that you go in knowing that fact because if you don't you it's just it's so much you just feel so lost in that moment now guys this is going to be tough because between all this craziness happening it's also your job to give uh, your partner a break whenever she can. She just pushed out a baby. She's going to be exhausted. She's learning to breastfeed for the first time and it's gonna be a lot on her. So you're gonna have to be the one to step up whenever they they bring you documents you need to fill or whatever. Um, you're, you Make sure you're always the point of contact when you can be. And again, going back to the friends and family visiting, if you can't coordinate that, find somebody who's willing to help because that'll make a huge, huge difference because everybody's gonna wanna come in and check on and see the new baby. So you're gonna have to be a little bit smarter about how you handle your time. But hey, it's all good because guess what? You guys, baby's born, you did your dues, hospitals kicked you out, now it's time to go home. So you put your new baby in that new car seat and you didn't have trouble at all, you knew exactly what to do. <laughs> Another side tip. Learn how to put a baby in a car seat before you put them in a car seat. And now it's finally time to drive home. And you drive 10 miles an hour because you are terrified you're gonna hit something or someone's gonna hit you. And a 15 minute drive takes you 45 minutes to an hour. Cause you're a good father and you care about safety. All right, now you guys are home for the first time with your new baby. So this is where funness is, I want to put it on pause for a second. Uh, this is where I kind of want to get a little real because this is kind of the tricky thing about being a new father um, that I think no one really talks about. We don't talk about it too much because we feel like maybe we're not allowed to or we can't or we feel like, you know, we might be failing in some way. But I think it's very important to address the fact that for some of us, when we get home, taking care of this baby and being a new father is going to affect us uh, somewhat in a, in a more negative way than we thought. And I say that meaning, obviously, uh, postpartum depression and anxiety does happen in men, um, even though we might not vocalize it as much. For me, I don't believe I was experiencing the full postpartum depression. However, I was experiencing very, very, very intense anxiety, which for me is completely out of character. I never really got anxiety attacks or anything my entire life. But for me, the, the first month was absolutely terrifying. And I'll try to explain why the best I can. Um, I don't know if I still fully understand it. It really hit hard that first week. And I just remember having that feeling of like, all right, I'm gonna be the best dad ever. But then I sh quickly realized that that motivation I felt I had for being the best dad actually quickly became anxiety because the thought thought always stuck with me is like, I wanna be the best dad. So everything I did was like, crap, I didn't do good there. Oh no, I, I suck there. Oh no, I'm failing, I'm failing. And literally this thought of like, I'm failing, I'm failing, I'm failing, I'm failing, just started to rise so quickly in my mind and since my wife is breastfeeding that first month i'm kind of just there or at least i felt like i was just there and didn't really have purpose there were times where she let me feed him from the bottle and things like that and that helped a little bit as far as that but even in doing that i felt like oh i'm i'm not feeding him right oh does he like this i don't know what's going on and all that stuff just like started to eat at me and i just felt like i really had no purpose which is, you know, weird, weird to say 
Because yes, we are important as fathers, but in that moment, you can feel like you're not and like that you're just not needed at all. So for me, I kind of took that out and started doing things like cleaning the house, things you should do, like doing dishes, laundry, helping out the mom as much as possible because this is a whole new experience for her. So you need to do those things as much as possible, even though you'll be exhausted as well. But for me, it, it wasn't just about helping her. It turned into this weird thing where I was like, if I don't clean this last dirty cup that's in the sink, I'm like, my baby's going to die. Like it's, it's, it's the, we it's the weirdest thing in the world. Like everything I was doing, I felt like if I don't do this, my baby's not going to make it. And that just started to connect with everything that was going on. Every time the baby would cry or something in the middle of the night, I would literally hop out of bed like this, like terrified, jump out of bed, leap <laughs> to the bed, like leap to my baby, make sure he was okay whatever needed to pat like pacify or something and just like be there but literally just the most exhausting feeling in the world. I think this is something that a lot of fathers deal with. We might not talk about it because we feel if we talk about it we either are gonna sound crazy or we don't have a right to talk about it because to being completely honest, the whole birthing baby process, you know, it is always focused on the mother and a lot of it should be because you guys are a very integral part of making this happen, obviously. Um, but I just feel like not enough is pointed out on the psychological health of a new father. And I think a lot of it might even have to do with some of the performances early on for us. Like we might not be as hands-on, we might, be do might not do the things that we should do because we're afraid that if we do do them, we'll do them wrong, or we'll do something to hurt our baby or something like that. You know, again, amazing, amazing moments that I had with my baby, with Jalen, uh, with my wife, and just experiencing all that, but hidden even in with that joy, that constant anxiety of like, I'm failing, I'm failing, I'm gonna fail, just stuck with me. And it wasn't until I finally admitted it, um, we did a whole Bible study with my family, um, where I finally admitted what I was going through and everybody kind of helped me and we talked it out and that's when I realized that I sh shouldn't be shutting aside how I'm feeling because I feel like I don't deserve to feel that way or I shouldn't feel that way because how, however someone's feeling is just, you know what I mean? And uh, we just need to do a better job as fathers and, of, and as of men just expressing that because just in expressing that, uh, we can better cope with it. And through that now, my wife, Bianca, she knew what I was going through so she could help better manage things. And, you know, then she started real noticing that I would like freak out. And so when I would freak out, there was one time I remember I shot up and she just kind of put her hand on my chest like, it's, it's okay, the baby's okay. And I was like, okay, cool, all right, fine. And then eventually I started calming down and if I did need to get up to help the baby in some way, I was able to get up as I normally would. So again, it's very important. Um, if, you're new, if you're a new dad, this might be something that you go through, some variation. It might not be as bad, could be worse, or you might already be going through it. And if you are, just know that you're not alone and definitely speak up, talk to somebody, because the longer you hold it in, the worse it's gonna get. But now thankfully we're three months in. I absolutely love being a dad and just talking about it, I was able to kind of ease out of that a little bit. I'd be lying if I say I still didn't have some form of anxiety, I still do. But by talking through it, we were able to work together as a unit because a big thing is the father being the support system as much as possible during these early times. And me feeling the way I did, I couldn't be that support system that she needed because it, it literally got so bad that there was one time where she didn't want me to get up because she felt if I picked up the baby, tried to rock him or whatever, she felt that I would drop him because I was driving myself so crazy that I wasn't sleeping, therefore I was even more exhausted than I should and she didn't want to take that chance that I would, you know, slip and fall or something like that, which was completely justified because I was that exhausted for being that stressed. <laughs> so yes, work together as a unit and vice versa, fathers, if the mothers are going through something, make sure to be there and to hear what they have to say and just, be there for each other. This is not a time to shut each other out and to keep things from each other because whatever you do now doesn't just affect you guys, it now affects your new baby that's in your life and you don't want that, all right? You want the baby to grow up happy, healthy as can be without you know any of this being an issue. Now our baby's three months and he's actually turning on his stomach now, uh, which has freaked me out a lot more, which again, 
my wife has had to calm me down. Um, there was a time where I thought I heard him suffocating on the baby monitor, so I literally leaped out of my chair, ran into the nursery just to find that it actually wasn't a sound of him suffocating. She was actually feeding him. And uh, yeah, I felt, I felt kind of silly, but then I dropped on the floor because I was just so relieved uh, that my baby was okay. So yeah, fathers, just express, express your feelings because this is, it's stressful, man. It's stressful if you keep it in. Also, use a support system, your family, friends, whoever's there who may have had that experience before that you could talk to um, that can help you through this because although this is an amazing experience, it is very hard and don't feel like you have to go through it alone. So I really hope this video helped you guys or at least gave you some thought into what you guys can expect moving forward or if you're going through that now. And like I said, our baby's only three months, so there's so much more t things to learn. Um, I'm still new at this. I'm still figuring it out. But uh, yeah, we can figure this out together, guys, and I will share everything that I learn that will hopefully make your guys' experience a lot easier. So with that, thank you guys so much for watching. You can follow our Instagram page, at RBFam, and keep up with our day-to-day, -day, just life, being new parents. And if you liked and enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel if you haven't. And to all the new parents out there, stay strong because we're in this together. You can do it. I believe in you. You're going to be the best dad in the world. You're going to be the best mom in the world. And that kid's going to be amazing.